part of the series on evaluating hops, I brewed a simple American Pale Ale using 100% Simcoe hops. It turned out pretty good. Well, let's get to it. So there are a bunch of hops out there. New ones, classic ones. As a home brewer, what's the best strategy for evaluating hops and determining which hops you want to use in your next brew? So to try to help answer that question, in this video, I brewed a simple American Pale Ale using 100% Simcoe hops. So the goal here is not necessarily to evaluate Simcoe hops, instead to look at some different strategies for evaluating hops. So in this case, is it worth it brewing a full batch of beer just to evaluate a single hop? Will a single hop pale ale turn out pretty nice? Well, in this case, I brewed a two and a half gallon batch, which for me it often is my full size batch, but a lot of people brew five gallon batches. Was it worth brewing five gallons of a Simcoe pale ale? Well, let's take a little look at the recipe and the brew day, and then we'll get back to tasting it. See if we can answer that. I creatively named this one Simcoe pale ale. It's an American pale ale made with Simcoe hops. It was back on April 22nd that I brewed this, 17 days later, on May 9th, I got around to putting in the keg, and then six days later, on the 15th, I did my evaluation. The batch size for this one, about 2.6 gallons in the fermenter, is around 10 liters. The calculated IBUs were 43, which I don't think it was really the bitterness. The calculated color, 6.6 .6 SRM. I calculate my recipes around a 70% efficiency, which I think is a little bit low, because I've been getting higher, but the calculated original gravity was 1051, and the calculated final gravity was 1012. That would have given me an ABV of 5.1%. The actual batch came in, I think, at 5.9%. So the water profile for this one is kind of what I've been using for an American Pale Ale. Basically, I want to boost the sulfate up, say 130, 150 kind of range, and also boost up the calcium. I want a sulfate to chloride ratio over three, in this case, 3.35. The other numbers, magnesium, sodium, chloride, they're all just kind of based on my tap water numbers. So I calculated I need 3.55 gallons, about 13.4 liters of my tap water. To adjust that to hit my target, I had 2.5 grams of gypsum, which is calcium sulfate, and also 2.8 milliliters of lactic acid to hit a target pH around 5.4. This may have been the first batch using lactic acid. For many batches, I've used 10% phosphoric acid. I also add half of a Camden tablet to remove the chlorine and chloramine that are in my tap water. The grain bill for this one is about 93% of a pale malt. That's 4.85 pounds, or 2.2 kilograms. Also, 6.7% of a caramel 40, or crystal malt. In this case, I'm using breeze, and that's 0.35 pounds, or about 160 grams. This is my first time using my bag of Montana Craft Malt. I'm kind of curious how it works out. The local store was out of our two row, and the Montana Craft was competitively priced with Breeze, so I thought it was worth giving it a try. So I went for my standard 60 minute mash at 152 degrees Fahrenheit, or about 67 degrees Celsius. The boil time for this one is just 30 minutes. All right, so now what we came for, the hopping schedule. So again, this one had a 30 minute boil. So I chose 0.2, or about six grams of Simcoe at the start of the boil, at 0.4 ounces or 11 grams of Simcoe at 10 minutes, and then one ounce of Simcoe at flame out. So I'd wanted to add more hops into the boil, and I probably should have. Every time I jacked up the amount a little bit, the IBU started getting out of hand. I think based on the age of the hops, which reduces alpha acid, the IBUs, they're just not quite right. The beer is less bitter than a calculated. Still a really nice beer, but I think if I did it again, I'd add a little bit more hops, especially at that 10 minute mark. Also, at the 10 minute mark, I added one gram of Irish moss, just to kind of help with clarity. The yeast in this one was Nottingham from Lalamon. I can't remember the last time I used Nottingham, other than in a recent seltzer. I used one packet, which is 11 grams. I direct pitched it into the wort. All right, well let's get into the brew. So I followed my pretty standard stovetop brew in the bag process. So I'll go through this pretty quick. So I went ahead and adjusted the mash water with the needed amount of lactic acid and gypsum, also with half of a Camden tablet in there. Once I got the water up to my target strike temperature, I went ahead and mixed in the milled grains, giving them a good stir before wrapping up the kettle in my sleeping bag. At the end of the mash, I measured 149 degrees Fahrenheit. So the mash dropped about three degrees Fahrenheit over 60 minutes while wrapped up in the sleeping bag. Well, that's good for me. Time to remove the grain bag. 
I let it drain in this colander to try to get as much of the sugars out as I can. To squeeze or not to squeeze. So I guess I realized a while back that it was very easy to use a plate to give a little extra squeezing. I think that's why I started to get a little higher efficiency on my stovetop brew in the bag. I'll probably jack up my expected efficiency, probably about three points, and see how that works out. Just before the start of the boil, I had six grams of Simcoe. Remember, this one gets a 30 minute boil. With 10 minutes left in the boil, I had another 11 grams of Simcoe, along with one gram of Irish moss. Then at flame out, I had a full one ounce for 28 grams of Simcoe. With the boil done, I chilled the wort down to pitching temperature using my immersion chiller and pump. First, I circulate tap water to get the most of the heat out of the wort. And then I switch over to ice water to get all the way down to yeast pitching temperatures. The chilled wort is transferred into my three gallon for monster fermenter. This strainer does a pretty good job of keeping out the majority of the hop debris from getting in the fermenter. Now it's time to pitch the yeast. So I pitch one full pack of Nottingham yeast by sprinkling it on top of the wort. I recorded an original gravity of 1055, which was four points over my target of 1051. The fermentation schedule was to pitch the yeast at 66 degrees Fahrenheit or 19 degrees Celsius and hold it there during the first few days of fermentation. As fermentation slowed, I raised the temperature up to 72 degrees Fahrenheit or 22 degrees Celsius and held it there until day 17 when I was able to fit in my schedule to keg this beer. Fermentation started off quickly. By day four, I could see signs that the vast majority of fermentation was done there was a nice crusty layer of yeast on top. Seems pretty typical of a lot of English yeast strains. I'm sure I could have kegged this beer earlier, but on day 17, I found time to put it into a keg. As I mentioned earlier, I got a little bit higher efficiency than I planned, so my original gravity was a little higher. Then the attenuation came in about 5% higher than what Beersmith predicted. Since I don't really have experience with Nottingham, I wasn't sure what to expect. But that meant my final gravity was lower, which drove up the ABV up to 5.9%. I might like my pale ales a little more sessionable than 5.9%, but let's see how this one turned out. So there's the beer, the Simcoe Pale Ale. It's a really nice looking color. Just a nice light golden from the crystal malt in there and the two row. It's got a really nice creamy head. Sometimes I add wheat into beers thinking it adds a little bit more creamy mouthfeel and creamy head. I'm not sure if that's 100% true because I've definitely brewed some beers that have really nice creamy heads and nice lacing without any wheat. And this one, just two row and crystal malt in the grain bill. So, but our goal here was to see about Simcoe hops, trying to evaluate hops on the boil side. If we get some good flavor, one, what do you think when you think of Simcoe? Me, I think of a lot of that kind of pine character. Actually, Simcoe is an interesting one because years ago, a lot of Simcoe beers I had were really that kind of cat pee kind of thing. I was kind of turned off to Simcoe and Citra for many years, and then I started really liking it. I think they changed some away how they harvest it or how they process it. So very seldom do I get a Simcoe or a Citra or really any beer that I get that strong kind of cat pee vibe from it these days. But then for many years, I associated Simcoe as a West Coast IPA hop. You know, a lot of pine, some of that citrus, just those classic American IPA hops, but in kind of a new kind of spin to them. You know, there's a time when it's like Citra, Amarillo, and Simcoe were the new hops on the block. But now these days, I see a lot of these really juicy New England style IPAs that are using Simcoe. It kind of made me a little curious about using Simcoe more. So my goal with this one was try to evaluate how Simcoe on the boil side. I kind of thought it would drive a little bit of that piney character. Well, let's get into it and see how we actually got out of this specific recipe. When I go in for aroma on it, what I get is kind of this, maybe like an overripe fruit, a little bit of like a pineapple and a mango kind of character. Not exactly what I typically would have associated with Simcoe. Let's go in for a taste. So if I search for it, I may get a little bit of kind of pine character on the taste, but I get a lot more of that really kind of nice, juicy, fruity, mango-y kind of pineapple kind of character. You know, as the beer lingers, you get a little bit of kind of grain complexity. The bitterness on this beer is really low, so it ends up being maybe a little too sweet for what I want in a pale ale. This beer's only been in the keg for a little over a week. I do find myself hitting it up, and it's a really nice beer. One potential negative with this specific beer, it seems like some of my pale ales have been sneaking up in ABV. I really like a pale ale that's a little closer to the 5% ABV range. This one's almost 6%, so it makes it a little bit hard to drink more than, say, a pint of it or so. 
So if you wanted to brew a beer to evaluate a hop, I think this would be a great recipe. It's a really flavorful beer. I would brew a five gallon batch of this. I almost wish I had a full five gallons around to drink up. Like I said, I've tried to target the ABV a little bit lower. And then I think I would add a little bit more hops into the boil just to boost up a little bit of the bitterness, boost up a little bit more of that sort of boil hop character. I also think in general, I would often add hops either in a dry hop or maybe as a whirlpool steep. In this case, I was really more trying to focus on the boil side additions. But if you were gonna brew it, you might wanna throw an ounce or two either into a whirlpool or into a dry hop addition, or heck, do both if you want extra hoppy. And then as far as the Nottingham yeast, I can't remember the last time I used Nottingham. Well, I used it in a cider a while ago, but the last time I used it in a beer, I can't really recall. I guess I kind of have some negative connotations associated with Nottingham. I'm not sure why. I guess in general, I kind of had negative connotations associated with a lot of dry yeast, but I've been brewing some great beers with dry yeast. I have no problem using Nottingham again. It's a little faster fermenter than US05, so that comes in handy. So make sure beers are ready and get in the keg on time. So like I said, this is really just part of a series trying to look at different ways to evaluate hops. In this case, Simcoe hops. So I looked a little bit at hop water. I'm going to do a hop water batch with Simcoe. I might try a couple different variations of hop water. It's so easy to make. I also have a small three quarter gallon batch hop sampler that's used extract. That's in the bottle already. It's not quite ready to taste, but that should be an interesting comparison. They both speak similar kind of pale ale type recipes. I'm also planning to brew a New England IPA style beer with 100% Simcoe hops. My schedule is kind of busy over the next few weeks. So hopefully I can find a brew day to get that one going. So if you're interested in these kind of videos and interested in learning more about hops, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Once I get the playlist ready of my hop evaluation series, I'll go ahead and put that up. And also check out this other video that YouTube thinks you might like. Well, I hope the information today will help you build some great beer. Cheers.